Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jenks. I'm going to show you how I've been organizing my research around autism. Why? Uh, because one, I'm autistic, and two, if this isn't the most autistic thing, literally organizing research about autism because you're autistic, I don't know what is. So you might find this interesting. Who knows? Let's just do this. <laughs> All right, so diving in. Because I'm autistic, I'm also very visual. I'm not sure if this is a universal thing, but I tend to be very visual. I need to see a lot of things. Uh, diagramming is really helpful. Seeing examples being shown, not just verbal instructions. Uh, very helpful for my comprehension and ability to grasp what's going on. So when I took notes on Devin Price's Unmasking Autism, holy crap, that book is amazing. Highly recommend it. Um, there'll be a link down to it below. Yeah, it's an affiliate link. Um, highly recommend you check out that book. Uh, it's not going to be like a textbook where it lists off everything, but if you're looking for something that describes more about autism, or is just, if you're autistic and you read it, you feel a little bit more, you feel like you're getting a hug through a book. Like, it's okay. There's been a lot of stuff that has happened to you, a lot of that's maybe negative, and this book is just a really nice read and it's a breath of fresh air on potentially a perspective of yourself. So that said, it's also just really great if you want to learn more about autistic individuals in your life or that you might encounter in life. So that said, there's a lot of notes that I took on that book. Uh, as a brief example, um, there are many highlights. You can see each of the colors. Uh, I have different highlights for different colors. I grab some of the figures. Like, look at all of these highlights. So that is a lot to process. There's a lot of things that I pulled out of this book because there's a lot of things to process and make sense of. And why do I need to do that? Because I'm autistic. And I feel the need to organize, categorize, label, codify, and do all this stuff to the information so that I can be that better understand myself and better talk about this subject as a whole. So that's why I'm overall doing this. Uh, but I'm also reading a lot of papers too at the same time. So like, here's how I'm approaching just the general, like this is a real life example of my messy workflow of me doing autism research. And usually when I'm saying I'm researching something, I don't mean like I'm poking around on Facebook like you're you know, 60 to 80 year old grandma thinking that somebody posting something about QAnon is like facts. Like, no, when I'm talking about research, I'm like, I'm reading research papers. I'm looking who published these research papers. I'm actually reading the, the methods and the methodology and who funded studies. Like I'm looking at actual research. That's what I mean when I say I'm researching something. And usually that's probably something that needs to be clarified these days because how many people say they researched something when they spent three minutes on Google or got saw an infographic on Facebook and never actually looked into the citation they may have actually included on the infographic? I digress. Tangents aside, uh, this is an actual example of my workflow, as messy as it might be, and how I'm going about actually tackling a big topic and making sense of things. So Unmasking Autism, obviously, it's a physical book, and I grabbed a lot of highlights. If you've seen my copy, uh, you can see how many flags I got going on here. It's it's quite a lot. Plus, I also have uh, I've downloaded all of the citations from this book, which is like around 200. Uh, so if I show you like Zotero, like I got many citations to go through. I also have other like um, groupings of autism research papers, general papers around the subject. So I got a lot of research papers to go through, but then also this is just one book and the paper citations from it. I also have many other books and I keep acquiring more. So there is a lot of research to be done. So how am I extracting information from these, the highlights? How am I getting the data from here to there? How am I organizing, centralizing, codifying, tagging, labeling, yada, yada, yada. How am I doing all of this with the disparate mediums and sources? And this is where a lot of my prior videos come into play. I talk a lot about the same things uh, as it changes over time, how I process things, how I move the data, how I get things to where I want them to be. So this is going to be a TLDR over how I do that. So Unmasking Autism, physical book. I read it. 
I took, I, I made physical highlights. I put flags in the book because satisfying. Um, and then I did take some additional notes in a physical notebook, which I then appended underneath the bullet points of the actual notes uh, where I deemed necessary. So all of those physical highlights, how did I get that digital? That's a lot of work, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So I wanted to read the physical book. What I did is um, Devin Price, Dr. Price, actually uh, has posted publicly about you can get a free copy of the book through illicit means, insert here, um, and they're okay with that. So I obviously bought a copy. You know, I will support Dr. Price. I already have uh, one of his other books, and I'm going to pick up their latest book when it comes out. So they're I already supported by buying the book, obviously, but I downloaded a copy from illicit means here, uh, solely so I could have a digital copy to then put into Zotero and then extract the Zotero highlights. Yes, I did have to go through and actually highlight everything again, but digitally, that's not as big of an ask as you're probably thinking it was, even with how many highlights I have, it was cool. So after I did that, I highlighted it in the digital copy. I did my Zotero workflow, which, you know, the video will pop up recommended there, my latest one at the timing of this filming. And I extracted those highlights. Now, obviously that's not a research paper. So all I cared about was just getting a digital copy of those highlight bullet points that were extracted. And that's all I did. I grabbed that and I put it into the literature note, which was my book literature note template. And that's why you see everything there the way it is. And that worked great for that book. Now, sometimes I don't have a lot of books that, or I don't have a book that needs a lot of highlights to be extracted. So it's just, there's only three in here. I only grabbed three highlights out of this book. I don't need to do that, all of that, just to do that. So in that case, I typically will use Readwise. And so inside of Readwise, um, there is a an OCR capability inside Readwise, so I can actually extract annotations from books. Um, so there's this one I just finished uh, recently, uh, What I Mean When I Say I'm Autistic, and there were a couple of highlights, and so I can go through these highlights, and then I actually will color them, so I can like select these, and I have um, the highlighter plugin, so I can say make that yellow, and now it's a yellow um, uh, highlight, and then I can just copy all of these and move those into the literature note. So a lot of this is kind of done for me. Um, when I just do it with Readwise because the Readwise will sync and then this already is using my book template uh, in a way, um, somewhat. So it makes it really easy to grab a lot of this information and just put it into the actual templates and then I can deal with the annotations after that. And then obviously, as I've already said with, um, you know, in prior video, link was there, is that when I get research papers, I do my normal Zotero research paper workflow. I'm in Zotero, I open up the paper, I'm reading the paper, I'm annotating the paper, highlighting the paper, yada yada, and then I extract that into Zotero, and then I have all this stuff that automatically gets generated, it has everything already done, here's the figures, here's the actual uh, highlights and annotations, and everything is there. So then what I can do with this is now, here is where it actually culminates into the workflow. I've got it all into Obsidian, I got all the highlights, all the data is here, it's in using my uh, templates and if I use my templates the way that they're intended to be used, I have my research uh, database folder plugin so I can actually keep track of all the research and where things are going and all of this culminates into an Obsidian Canvas. Now this is why I love, love, love Obsidian Canvas. It does a lot, it gets out of your way, and it's already just it's part of Obsidian, so it's not like an external tool that you're having to work with and interface with Obsidian. It's native Obsidian functionality, working with notes and dealing with notes, but in a visual diagramming format. And I absolutely adore it because it makes my research workflow so much easier now that I'm doing things this way, especially with something that's so large and complex as the subject of autism and all the other aspects of life that it touches, uh, physicality, um, emotional states, uh, sensory sensitivities, and interpersonal interactions, workplace, all kinds of stuff that can interact with this. That's a lot of things that are better suited for me to have spread out on a table. I'm not using physical index cards like Nicholas Lumen and Zettelkosten. I am using digital means, which in this case, this diagramming uh, paradigm of Canvas really makes this 
so much easier for me to grasp and actually work with productively. So what does the canvas look like? How do I approach this? Let's take a look. So on the canvas, there's a lot of different colored squares as I've been you know, moving through my research. I've been working on this for a little while and I've you know also procrastinated a bit and put it down as one does when they're neuro neurodivergent. So I do have a color key and there are some arrows here and there's just a lot of like a lot of squares. What is all this? What's going on? So what I've been doing to start off this workflow is some of these notes, some of these are notes that I've already had. Like when I zoom out and you see text on them, those means that those are, are already existing notes in Obsidian somewhere or a file or whatever. And so they, they also have colors. Now these notes I might be working on, I might've created them through this process or they might've already been in existence and they're related to autism. So I'm dropping them on the canvas to be worked on as part of this whole research workflow. And then there I have a key here. So the colors of the squares correlate to one is an evergreen note, a work in progress note, a note that the file exists, but I haven't really started putting content into that note, a pre note idea, or just a collection place before that becomes an actual note of these colors. And then a purple one is like an actual input to process as part of this research. So you can see I have a bunch of different things going on here. I have a note for masking because masking is a very big part of autism, autism trauma, and unmasking autism. So like there's a lot of things to do with masking. And you can see I have a highlight in here and I have some stuff going on. What I'm doing with Canvas, basically, is anytime I come across a term, a symptom, a presentation, or an aspect of autism or something relating to autism, hyperlexia, tactile defensiveness, misophonia, or yeah, misophonia, uh, alexithymia, hypervigilance, uh, sensory sensitivity as a general topic, meltdowns and shutdowns. Anytime I'm coming across any of these isolated topics, I put an empty card on here like alexithymia. Anytime I come across one of those topics, I create an empty card here on the canvas. And why I'm doing that is that now this card reminds me just by existing here, that I need to add content to it and flesh it out. It's an actual aspect, presentation, symptom, something related to autism, and therefore I want to have it connected to this sphere of knowledge and understanding and research. So I create those, and then eventually, you can see there's a lot of content getting dropped into some of these. What I do is that when I process a new input, like I'm still working through unmasking autism because it's got a lot of highlights that I'm working through. So like I'm, still going through it and I'm about right here. Here's my little placeholder. I'm about right here. I got a lot left to go through. So as I do that, I add those items to these cards. And if I go into this one and show it off here, you can see that I, uh, well, that's not that one. Let's see, here we go. So you can see I'm actually transcluding these quotes and these highlights and the notes with them into these cards. I'm transcluding them. So in that way, I'm one, getting that hard link eventually to a note to the source notes, but also I don't have to copy and paste the content. So we're reducing duplication. And as I'm doing this over time, I can grab different sources and just constantly drop new highlights into these topic areas and build out these topic notes over time with all the different sources that I'm consuming on just the general sphere of autism research. So as I read something about, uh, which I just did, I just read a paper about um, uh, anorexia nervosa and the comorbidity rate of autism diagnosis with anorexia because eating disorders is something that, you know, uh, autistic individuals will struggle with a lot. For one, I got diagnosed with an unspecified eating disorder just because of my weird proclivities and habits around food. And I don't really like to eat a lot of the time. So this is an actual real life impact and example of autism research. And so uh, there is a note here for flawed coping strategies. And I've you know added some information about anorexia nervosa there. But there's also uh, a note I have on uh, autism and eating. And here I'm talking about that exact effect. And that's why I can have the same information into two different cards, all from the same source about research and that. And so this is how I'm collecting all the highlights from diff disparate sources. And then as I process them, I can go through this, I can process this, mark it as processed, and I can move these pieces of content into these cards 
so that then I'm not having a bunch of sources, source notes, literature notes floating around waiting to be processed. It's done. Processed. Done. Move along. Processed. Done. Move along. Everything that I now care about is in this visual process of the canvas. Cards holding transcluded highlights that then, like these ones over here that I'm a little bit closer to processing uh, more fully, I can flesh out more content and move this through the actual note-taking workflow that I do and I've talked about in all my other videos with the tags. You know, this one's on the incubator um, status. I could make them uh, boat notes because they're floating around, not connected to anything. Like there's so many different ways to, you know, spin off from this, but just having the diagram layout and the visual organization of information this way with the autism information is so helpful because now if I find it harder or easier, I find it easier now to process new inputs, just grab the necessary, you know, precipitate information I've gathered from those inputs, drop it into the canvas. And now as I you know, get all of this stuff, you know, processed and put into the canvas, I can process these notes over time, add to them and make them evergreen notes over time. And all of my autism research is visually laid out here. And this is just using Canvas because if I look at my bookmarks, I also have um, special bookmarks for just topics in general. And I have one for a whole collection for just autism where I have one, I have a graph view for just autism and autism uh, related items, including the actual inputs, the tags, the actual notes. But I also have the actual note, the mock for autism. I have the canvas that you already saw. I have a search for all things autism. And then I also have a search for related to autism, but are not currently connected via hard links. So I can find all of those orphan notes. And this might not be working too well. So we'll have to look at that later. But overall, this is how I've been approaching my autism research. And I am finding it incredibly valuable and just an overall great strategy for me that is providing value to me in a way that I just, this is great for how I process information. Visually, it's all visible, it's all spread out, it's all organized, I can arrow it together, I can drop transclusions, it's all on the board, it's not these other sources floating around here, there's no piles, it's just the board. It's all there. No duplication, transclusions, related arrows, a color coding scheme, and I can easily turn these cards into notes at any time. Loving my workflow, wanted to share, wanted to geek out about it and gush. So hopefully you, you find that interesting. Hopefully uh, I've said the word autism enough times in this video to make it a very viable drinking game. But let me know what you think of the workflow. Maybe you have some cool ideas. Maybe you just like how I did things or have a question about how I did things. Let me know. Love to hear your thoughts. But yeah, that's how I'm researching this topic now. And it's been a blast. So on that note, I'll catch you all in the next one.